But we started this building this railway about I think it, I think it was about 1969. I think wasn't it? Yeah, 68 sticks in my mind. Yeah. But, uh, so that's when the track first started. So it's been around since then. The wish when I was a kid and a teenager starting this was one day to see a steam engine and it's taken 45 years for it to happen. <laughs> This railway really starts with a chap called Bill Morris, who was the youngest son of, was it seven or nine, um, who lived out somewhere towards Tenbury Wells. And um, he became an agricultural contractor, but he, he was also very interested in railways. And when the Bromyard Line closed in September 1964, it was he who organised the last train, which was Sunday after the Saturday, wasn't it, Bob? Because you were in... You were here all day in the signal box on the last day of the train. And the signalman said, uh, are you getting back to Worcester? And I said, on the last train. He said, this is the last train. He threw the boards on to stop a, to be, me to get on. Anyway, the day after, Bill Morris organised the last train, which is a 12 coach special to Blackpool. Set out from here. <laughs> Somebody told me they've got a Kerr Stewart loco in, in, in the apple orchard at uh, Lysinton near Worcester at Brockham in Farm. So I went out one Sunday morning and found Mr. Beard, the farmer, and uh, he said, yes, it's here somewhere under that pile of logs. And he grubbed up all the apple trees in the orchard, tons and tons, and somewhere underneath that was this, this loco. So I spent hours diving through the logs until I found the engine and um, the chimney was off and, and the water tank was off but um, it looked restorable and I said to him, well, what are you planning to do with it? He said, well, no plans really and uh, I said, well, if I have it, can I restore it? He said, oh yes, he said, if, if you promise to restore it, you can have it. So a fortnight later, I went with Les Lamb from Hump um, Cockpit. We took a low loader and uh, brought it back to, to Worcester. But it was uh, in a terrible state. Before we could steam it, it took about a year. It, the, the slide valves were in a mess, and uh, well, everything was in a mess. But uh, eventually, we got it put together and finished off with Avaris with where it's been giving dri driver training now for years but it's a lovely little engine. The start of this railway was that Bill in an off moment bought the majority of an 18 inch gauge miniature railway at New Brighton that was owned by a chap called Mann, T.A. Mann, wasn't it? Thomas Edward Mann. And with it came a Kerwin Atlantic which have got a streamlined body, a bit like a coronation. And he bought this and some rails from New Brighton. And the first time I met Bill was in 1967. And uh, I came down here in the what's now the engine shed and started work cleaning up the frame and doing some painting and such like. Next thing that happened was that Bill managed to locate an uh, 18 inch gauge engine, which the Ravenglass Nestale bought with a load of carriages. Uh, the, the Ratty used the carriages, but they sold the they sold the engine on to Bill. And then so they were going to convert it to 15 gauge. They were, but there's not enough room. You can't yeah. do it. You can do it with the simplex. We can't do the Ruston. So anyway, so we had the Ruston, and then the first thing we ever did was to build a railway across the field over the ri river for um, Bromyard Garlo. Equipment started to be bought, and it was found that it was much easier to get two foot stuff rather than 18 inch, wasn't it? And I think. Bought ne he bought Nell, which was um, from Ruston Ponds before Ruston Sewage Works, um, and um, and he and so the idea was then that he should convert to two foot. 
um, the railway that this the, this site here was starting to be built as an industrial estate, and so um, uh, it was actually my father actually was then a councillor persuaded the council to buy the railway up to the up to the tile works and sell it on to build for a railway. That duly happened, and as the industrial estates started, well, before the industrial estates started, we started laying track here. And um, it gradually sort of built, it's a bit of a ramshackle setup. In those early days, the people who were involved to start with were a couple of school friends of mine. <laughs> we bought a simplex from Birmingham Waterworks, which we loaded up near Clibbury, didn't we? Brought that back, number seven. And then you bought this Ruston off the... Um, My employers. Your employers. Built in 1939. And, You're not uh, that old, are you? Uh, no, but it built in 1939. I bought it in 1970, so I've known uh, only far longer than ever my employers owned it before me. So I suppose, really, we then sort of gradually built the track up as far as brick barns. I remember buying a load of rail from a, a scrapyard at Gloucester Docks and we took a minibus down to get it. When we shoved the mini the rails through the back door, it overbalanced out the back. So we had to buy an anvil to put on the on the rails at the front to keep them in. And every time we came from Brown, <laughs> the whole thing reared up. <laughs> and we went to Bilf Wells and bought a load of 20 pound rail off a very high Viaduct loading place. Bill bought the Avonvale Railway. Was it Avonvale Concrete Products or something? Something like that. Was it Defford? Defford, Defford, yeah. And that was another Ruston came from there and a load of track and some concrete sleepers. Wagons over here from um, uh, Briley Hill. Stuff came from everywhere and then we young lads started playing with it and trying to build a railway. Anyway, as time went on, it became more abundant. Bill was getting old and Bill offered to sell it to Bob which you did, yeah. and and then really the story became you because the big thing you did was to buy all this 35 pound rail and the Simplex, wasn't it? Yeah. Which was when? Uh, that would be about 1976. Was that the Jubilee year? Yeah, back then. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you even spent Christmas Day down there dismantling the railway, didn't you? Yeah, eight, eight weeks. At <laughs> his Christmas dinner year. on a railway. Eight, eight weeks, so called holiday, in the sewage works in Kent. Uh, just not this railway. All I was interested in was the track, but I had to have a pair of three and a half ton uh, simplexes. Best um, engine you ever bought. Yeah, and um, 30, 30 odd, uh, one cubic yard skips to go with it. Uh, and, then, and then you built the railway right up to the tile works and eventually bought the shed at the tile works and the cutting. Um, and we used to have wonderful things I mean we used to Father Christmas used to come in we used to go up with two trucks I used to go up with Nell with the van and go up the branch and you came up with Simplex and two carriage fulls of kids and they came up and I came down and, and Father Christmas met them and hit the cutting and we brought the whole cavalcade back here didn't we yes and that happened for years yes and Father Christmas used to hang out the side and say hello kids and they, and they all knew they it was to, Bill they used to yell back do we know it's you, Bill Marsh, you silly old fool? <laughs> but we had great fun with that, and then you had the series of, of barbecues up in the cutting, didn't you? Which was, uh... Yeah, we used to have barbecue in June and the bonfire in November. I was clear of the track for each one, and uh, twice a year, used to keep the uh, railway clear in those days, but it's 24 7 these, these 24 years, never stops growing. But the railway sort of stayed fairly moribund ever since. There's a. We haven't bought much stuff recently, but it's. It's been a joy, really, for those that come and, and play with it. There's a little coterie of people, some of which have served you extremely well for a long period. 